everybody, it's me Margaret and I'm trying to squeeze in a yarn addiction video before I leave to go on vacation. So I thought, what would be a better topic than how to travel, air travel that is, with yarn? Now you know when you take a car trip, no problem, you can just take anything you want, throw it in the car, off you go, life is great. But when you fly, things are a little bit different. Now first let's clarify that you can take your crochet hooks and your knitting needles on the plane. Um, there are some discrepancies about scissors. I Let me take a moment to show you where to find this information because it does change from time to time, um, but it's, it's easily accessible by any computer. Usually what I do, you can take a purse and you can take a carry-on on the airplane. Um, and of course the, it has specifications about the size of it. Uh, I normally don't bother with the purse. I, um, if I have to take a purse with me when I get there, then I'll pack it. But I'll take everything out that I need and put it in my carry-on just so that I'll have one thing to keep up with. Um, normally this little black leather backpack becomes my carry-on. And I liked it because it had all these little compartments and whatnot, but clearly it is just not big enough to carry yarn and all the things that you need to carry when you get on the airplane. So, I bought this. This is a travel bag. Well, actually, it's, it's any kind of bag. It has wheels on it. Uh, I thought it would make a good carry-on bag for my yarn. And I got it from Joann's. Uh, because it is specifically made for yarn, you have little pockets in here. I don't think you can see them on the camera, but there's little pockets designed specifically for your knitting needles and your crochet hooks. Other than that, there are no other inside pockets in here. It's just one big, lovely cavern of space. Now, on the outside, you have a good pocket where you can put papers and whatnot. On the back, you have a faux pocket, or fake for common terms. This, it just covers up your telescoping handle. The thing to look for when you're shopping for a carry-on is to make sure that it's going to fit under the seat or fit in the overhead bins. And you can go to the website of the airline that you'll be flying in and find this information out. And then, of course, this tag was pretty handy dandy because it did give the measurements on here. So I knew that this would fit. Uh, it might be close shoving it underneath, but it will be fine in the overhead bin. So that's good. And just so you'll know, this was $60. It was $59.99. I used a 40% off coupon and then was kicking myself because I later found a 50% off coupon when I got home. So I saved $24 on it. So that was pretty good. Um, I will give you a full review of how it, how it worked when I get back. Um, I find that, that handle, the telescopic handle, is a little, little wiggly, a little flimsy. Um, so I know it's not something that you would want to check. But for a carry-on with you taking care of it, I think it'll probably be okay. All right, so before we talk about what yarn and whatever you're going to put in there. You have to figure out how much room you're going to have left. So first you got to get the the true necessities. Okay, I take my purse because I do not carry a purse with me, uh, like I said. So I will go through my purse, take out all the things that are absolutely necessary that I need to bring with me and put it, in. actually I put everything out first and see how it is and then Maybe I'll group them into little bags or something, depending on what it is. Okay, then I think about snacks. I will, of course, take this out, put it in little snack bags, and um, keep that handy. Because airport food is not only not good for you, but it's also very expensive, so we got to keep snacks handy. Um, protein bars, you can't live on carbs alone. And while I'm on this, don't buy protein bars that have 500,000 ingredients in the back that you can't pronounce. Most of those things are glorified candy bars full of chemicals, and you don't want to do that. So look for the Cliff brand. These are Mojo bars. They are delicious. Lots of different flavors. Um, 
they're more along the lines of a uh, granola bar. These are, but high in protein. Lots of different flavors of those. And then Cliff also makes um, a different kind of protein bar. This is um, the kids, uh, a smaller version of their regular one. This is the kid size, but it's really all you need. These are actually a little bit higher in sugar than I would like, but uh, because they have so much protein, they will keep your body from insulin spiking, like if you were to eat a piece of candy. So it slows the digestion process down and therefore slows the insulin production down. Okay, so you have to consider all your snacks and everything that you're gonna bring. Um, I always bring these shout wipes because I am messy. <laughs> Actually, I keep these with me everywhere. Ooh, the phone's ringing. All right, now I gotta try to remember where I left off. Um, shout wipes. Did I say that I don't have good luck with those tied pins or those tied sticks? They just don't work for me. But um, these work really well, and I'm also concerned about if I was, if I were um, crocheting a baby hat and I spill coffee on it or something, ah, which I haven't been known to do before, uh, this would be handy dandy to save the day. And then medicines, you know, Tylenol in case you get a headache, Benadryl, my husband is allergic to stings and bites of any kind, so I always keep that handy. And then that brings us to, once I get everything important that I really need, then I'll see how much room I have for my yarn. And this is the yarn that I'm going to be bringing. I told you before that I am working on um, the preemie hats and so all I'm bringing is baby yarn for that but I don't need all of this on the airplane so what I will do is see how much room I have and then I'll show you a way that you can uh, condense or shrink the amount of space that the yarn takes up Okay, you've seen, everybody has seen those commercials for space bags, and you may even own some, but I have found that just regular old zipper bags will work. This happens to be uh, the Dollar Tree brand, and it's a gallon container. Now, this trick comes in really handy in any kind of packing. Um, I'll put things like underwear or swimsuits or whatever and smash it down and it just makes so much more room. But one of the reasons why yarn is so soft and fluffy is because it has a lot of air in it. <clears throat> so basically what we're going to do is just squeeze out the air. And this will save some room either for your carry-on or for your suitcase. Okay, let's just use these three. All right. The method that I use is I'll seal almost all the way shut, okay? And then you get something big and heavy and flat, like this crochet pattern book, and smash it down. Smash it down. Get as much air as, as you can out of it. <clears throat> and then you have this little nicely condensed bag. Perfect for packing all the extras in the suitcase. So, um, and I'll probably do this too to start out with uh, in my carry-on. Now, what do you do if you don't have your big heavy book? Because you can guarantee I won't be bringing that. And I open it up and I choose a yarn and I'm working on it. And the flight attendant comes on and says, time to put everything away. <clears throat> okay, you use the same method, but you just roll it. Okay, you've seen them do that on the space bag commercial family and you just roll it up, okay, and you get the, the air out of it again. So this is handy dandy tip for any kind of packing. Oh, okay, now once you have decided what projects you're doing and the yarn you're bringing, of course you can't forget your hooks and your pattern, so um, you'll then know what to bring. Now. I do, everybody knows that I like the Susan Bates hooks, but um, 
I probably won't bring my metal ones just because they'll probably set off the metal detector and then I have to explain it and all that kind of stuff and um, that's just not necessary. Next thing to consider is scissors. The website says that a blade less than four inches should be okay. So these are my scissors that I normally take. See if you can tell if they would be acceptable. Now, also on the website, no matter what information they give, they always have a little caveat at the bottom that says, um, but in certain circumstances, this may change, or I, I don't know how it's phrased. So rather than risk having my favorite little craft scissors taken away, I will use fingernail clippers because they are certainly allowable and I will just keep them <coughs> handy in um, my little pill bottle. I use this pill bottle to keep my uh, tapestry needles, a, a threader, uh, stitch markers, and I'll just put my fingernail clippers in here and that's perfectly acceptable. Um, they are metal and they did not set off the uh, metal detectors so that could just be a rational fear on my part so another thing I want to talk about are the patterns you want to keep your patterns handy and again you don't want to be carrying things like you know this book you want to have everything as concise as possible so I have printed out what I want to bring that's not it and I actually um, combine stuff so that it would fit on more than, you know, two things would fit on one page just to cut down what I have to keep up with. Uh, and, and I'll be bringing this. So these are the patterns that I want to refer to. And I think I, I mentioned before that I wanted to be able to vary what I do because I get bored so easily. Um, Bob Wilson123 has a charity that she supports on a regular basis. And I look to see what patterns she suggested for preemie hats and one of the things that she does that I, I really love this idea is you work it flat and she gives you a bunch of dimensions which again I also have other dimensions here about the size of the baby um, the size of the baby's head you know and, and that sort of thing so we can't forget the teen nightsy little bitty ones too like the size of a ping pong ball type heads but that's what she's you know, really pushing this, the teeny teenies, micro preemies they're called. And she'll work a flat piece of any stitch. And then you seam it together and gather the top. And that way I, I could use this handy dandy book again. So what I did for these stitches, I found a few of them that I'd like to try and I just snapped a picture with my phone. So I've got about five different patterns that I thought would work well, and I snapped a picture with my phone. So it has the instructions, well, the picture of the stitch, the instructions, and the chart all there, handy dandy. So I don't have to bring anything more than I have to. Uh, you don't like to be, I mean, it's not a good idea to be loading yourself down and carrying a bunch of stuff through airports, especially if you have a connecting flight. and you have to run to catch the next one that's just miserable so pack as lightly as possible here's my abacus bracelet that my sister made for me um, with the turquoise blocks I guess and the little patterned um, Celtic design things here but uh, I love these things <laughs>